We are live, fellas. Welcome to the second episode of your boys, Game Boys podcast. What is up, chat? Let's introduce ourselves. I'm Leo, out of focus and in range, still trying to get this whole autofocus thing figured out. I'll hit it up to Isaac now. Welcome, everybody, to our shared space where we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff that we find interesting in the video game world or just in general. As you can see underneath my name, I farted. So we're going to continue <laughs> on and keep it rolling to uh, Nick. Nick, what you got for us? How's it going, guys? It's your boy, Nick here. Excited for the second episode of the Game Boys podcast. Thanks for checking us out. And we're going to Sam. Yeah, and this is Sam. Uh, as you can see, I love pizza. And yeah, we have a couple of topics lined up for today. As usual, we have Cartridge Club where we play a game um, every single month and uh, invite you guys along to play with us. This month specifically, I had to choose a game that we're playing. And I decided to play Sin and Punishment on the Nintendo 64, um, which if you guys have not heard of it, um, it's a game that actually never came out in the United States and it originally only came out in Japan which was very surprising after we played it. Think you've seen everything the Nintendo 64 has to offer? Think again. This month for Cartridge Club, we're playing one of the Nintendo 64's most underrated adrenaline-fueled games, Sin and Punishment. It's a wild rail shooter that most gamers miss, but we're here to break it down and give our thoughts. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll find out why this hidden gem deserves a spot in your retro collection. I'll go first, since I'm the one that decided. Um, I will say, dude, I want to point one thing out about Sin and Punishment. The voice acting is trash. Thinking of revenge? I lost Kachua. Now it's Achi's turn to lose some. It's terrible, bro. It's, it's it, You want to like it. You want to like it because you like the characters. And you want to have them like kind of like display their tones in the same way that probably the story was written, but they just do not capture the tone of the story or uh, just the themes of the game at all. It just kind of sounds like some goofy guys making fun of what the game was supposed to be about. Yeah, which sucks because like normally you would watch like let's say you watched an anime, right? If you watched an anime, normally sometimes you can go like, oh, the English voice acting suck. Let me go listen to the actual Japanese dub and then see what maybe the Japanese voice actors intended for the game to uh, resonate with you with in terms of the inflections and the tone of the delivery of lines. We didn't get that. We got the cheesy English uh, lines anyway. So it was a little goofy for sure. It's funny that you mentioned that because uh, when I was playing, I was like, I could tell this took a lot of Evangelion influence and it seems like it's trying to take itself seriously. But because the voice acting is so bad, it's, it seems like a parody of it instead. And I know that's yeah. not what they're going for because the story is serious. But with the voice acting, it's like, oh, Christ, how did you miss the mark that bad? Thankfully, the gameplay makes up for it. Occasionally, you know, like some, sometimes when the dialogue and uh, voice acting is so bad, it's kind of endearing and charming, kind of like Resident mm -hmm. Evil. But yeah, I don't know, man. It, it's unfortunate because the game is, is pretty good. Um, a question I have is, given that this came out, and I, I don't know why I didn't look this up, but given that it was originally Japan only, did they later uh, like dub this game, or how come the audio is in English? I think it just straight up was in English. Um, yeah, it just was in English. Isaac, did gotcha. you play the Japanese version on your Nintendo 64? So I had a English reproduction, or I shouldn't even say English reproduction, it was just a reproduction copy that was... Um, fitted to fit in Japanese uh, 64s or American 64s. But it was the same straight-up ROM that mm -hmm. was loaded onto the cartridge. And there's there's no Japanese dub as far as I'm aware. I kind of wish there was. Um, kind of going back to earlier how Leo was pointing out that there's a lot of influence from anime like Evangelion. And you would think that they would at least have some sort of uh, original cut but the original cut, at least as far as I'm aware, is the goofier English translation, quote unquote. It just seems like even a couple of lines sound like, okay, that's supposed to be a grown woman, but I could tell that's a little kid on the mic. All right, so let's go into it. Uh, my background with this game, why the 
the other two fellows right now might have said that like I, I should talk about it right now is I did try to buy this game quite a few years going to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. So when we would go to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, that was one of the games that was usually on my list for our first couple years. And we'd been going to that expo for around 10 years. Um, I didn't ever really see it in person on a Japanese uh, physical cartridge. It wasn't until that I got it on a reproduction cartridge at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. But being that I did get eventually some form of manner of playing it on a physical console, uh, I played the majority of it during COVID for the first time and played through it, beat it, and loved it. And it became one of my favorite N64 games. Uh, playing it now, after I have kind of become uh, less so strict on how much time and hours I sink onto a game in one time, it was actually kind of cozy to be able to play this run and gun, on rail shooter type game. Uh, the game is just visually pretty impressive for its time. It's an N64 game that plays and feels more like something that you would expect of something on the Dreamcast or maybe even something on the PS1 or the Sega Saturn, something like that. Um, it's an on-rail shooter where you play as these two characters that are basically fighting against these things. I had to look this up too because I didn't know this, even though I played this game years ago. There's these monsters called ruffians. I guess they farmed them and it's super super uh gory to get into uh, some shock factor i guess they were growing these creatures to eat them and then eventually they rebelled against them and there's these just monsters that are coming out and attacking the earth so you got these two cops kind of characters that have these guns that also turn into swords and you're in an on-rail shooter kind of like star fox and you're going around and shooting them and then one of the characters without going too much into details starts to find out some mm, situations that have him linked to the ruffians but what i really like about the game is that this is the type of game that i think exceeds the console and it was also limited by the console the console is the n64 if you if you know what i'm talking about it has that banana looking controller where there's just it looks like a w like this right so you had to make some sacrifices. You had to use the control stick if you wanted to have the best aiming. But in order to do the best aiming, usually people are used to using their right hand. You had to move your hand to the left. So you were using the D-pad and your right hand on the control stick. All of that being said, the game has some really intuitive controls. The levels will teach you how to play. The levels will teach you, hey, maybe you should try something different, like using your sword attack instead of your gun attack all the time. Hey, maybe you should try dodging instead of just running the whole time. Hey, maybe you should have uh, switched types of guns. Maybe one of them that is locking on is going to be weaker, and maybe one of them is going to be stronger. All that being said, I personally love Sin and Punishment. I think it's a very good time. If you have the eShop's virtual console and Nintendo Switch with the expansion pass, it's right there. Like we said, even though it's a Japanese exclusive game originally on console, it has English voice acting, albeit a little on the goofier side. But it makes for a very good story with anime-esque looking characters who are just going through kind of a grim uh, plot. Um, I, like I said, I don't want to go into spoilers, but... It's a good time if you are into on-rail shooters and you want to play a little hidden gem that's on the 64 that we didn't get in the States. Um, yeah, that's Sin and Punishment for me. Uh, I'll go ahead and pass it on back. I'm guessing we'll probably throw it back to Sam last because he's the one who chose this game. Um, I'll throw it to Leo. I'll throw it to Leo right now. I think right. three minutes starting now. I will play this noise whenever you're at three minutes, but Damn, you can wrap got, it up after the three minutes. We got a yapometer now? Yeah. All right, so um, the thing about this game is that, as Isaac indicated, its strength is not in the story, or at the very least, uh, the lore might be good. The story itself is questionable, and there's not very much character development to speak of, but gameplay is what really gets it, and we all played it on the Switch Virtual Console uh, Experience Expansion Pack. I forget what it's called. And the thing about that is I do not have an N64 controller because I... Hot take! That is one of the worst controllers ever made. I know that the meme is, um, oh, uh, it expects you to have three hands. And I also know that's not true. But with this game, even when I was playing it with the uh, whole two hand thing, I'm like, is it expecting me to switch back and forth between the stick and the D pad? Like, just, yeah. Sorry, but, sorry. I don't mean to cut it in, Leo, but like, don't you guys think this game would have done so much better if it let you do controller mapping? Yes. Yeah. 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 Definitely. That's it. Uh, I did get used to it, and it does become intuitive after a while with one caveat. And it's not its own, the game's fault. This is just 
uh, muscle memory from cent- centuries, uh, decades of gaming. And that's that. I, if I would pause the game, then come back to it like five minutes later, I would automatically just go to the analog stick for movement and it's actually the D-pad that's uh, mapped to movement. And that's something I had kept on having to go, oh yeah, let's, let's get back to uh, D-pad for movement. But beyond that, the game does control really well. It's really fun. I'm going to give it that. Uh, based on pure fun factor, it is one of the best, if not the best, uh, N64 game that I've played. Because uh, the guys know this about me. I'm not the biggest N64 person in the uh, channel. If anything, uh, out of the five of us, I would be number five ranked out of five as far as N64 lovability goes. That said, this is the sort of game that makes me go like, oh, maybe I should check out more of the library because the developer Treasure also did Mischief Makers, another one that I've been actually very interested in checking out. And I know try that, it sometime. Yeah, uh, I've I've given it a shot for like five minutes, but not, nothing like a deep dive like this where I've actually gone in and played it all the way through. Save scumming, I'm not going to lie, but uh, I did beat it. And the entire time I was like, oh, dang, I suck at this, but I'm going to give it another shot. This is really fun. And it's it's just the sort of game that like it makes you kind of question like, why don't they make stuff like this anymore? And with Isaac's history with this game where he's talking about like, oh, it's this anime style game, but it's really arcadey. I'm like, I've always kind of said it like, this to Isaac is what Bulk Slash is to me. It's the sort of game that makes you go, damn, I want more of this type of thing. We need more of these types of games nowadays. The sorts that like could almost, like, it, it makes you go like, it's in the top five of the of the library that it's on. But it just doesn't get the recognition it deserves because it's overshadowed shadowed by the Sonics, by the Marios, by this, by that. It's like, no, you got to pull in for these underdogs because that's how we get these games to be made, you know? Ah, totally agree. Game is totally just, agree. Uh, ah, yeah. I'm gushing. Think it's, a, in, it's a top game. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Awesome. Like, so I'll say this to cap it off. My biggest complaints are the story is wonky. The characters aren't all that great. But the gameplay is what really makes up for it. And I am so glad that Sam picked this because now this is a game that I'm like, all right, I got to look for a uh, cartridge of this one. I'm going to add this to my N64 collection now. (laughs) All right, I'll cap it off there. I'll pass it over to Nick now because I believe Sam's going to be going last. So I really enjoyed what I played in this game. I'm going to agree with Isaac. The the visuals are very good for the system. I think that, it, as Isaac mentioned, it, it, it definitely replicates a Dreamcast game, um, maybe even like an early GameCube game even. Makes me wonder if, did, did, this, game, did this game require the um, expansion pack? I don't believe it did. I don't think That's so. Impressive. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it did. Because when, when I got it originally, I didn't have an expansion pack yet. 60 FPS. So um, I really enjoyed the Good game. luck getting 20 FPS out of this system. I know, yeah. Um, I really enjoy the game. The gameplay itself is phenomenal. Um, I kept comparing this game to Star Fox 64 just because obviously it's on the console. Um, Star Fox 64 is probably the most well-known, um, you know, uh, rail, on-rail shooter. On-rail shooter. Um, maybe in general. That and like Pokemon Snap are like the yeah. on-rail shooters of the 64. Definitely. Um, I keep kept comparing it to Star Fox 64. And honestly, it's like... It's a definitely harder Star Fox 64, in my opinion. Um, both games are great. However, Sin and Punishment um, definitely emphasizes that punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing on normal. I don't know about you guys. Um, and I was having some difficulty, man. Like, I think I'm solid at video games, but like, I kept dying in some situations. Um, oh, this I, game is hard as hell. Yeah, it's hard. Um, definitely something that um, I know Leo and Isaac touched upon was the controls. I got used to it eventually, kind of how Leo mentioned. I kept going back and forth between the analog and the D-pad. And then I, I had to remind myself, well, it probably plays better on an actual N64 controller, even though the N64 controller is controversial. And I think it's a pretty poor controller as well. When it works, it kind of works well. But I had kept reminding myself, like, it's, you know, not made for the Switch. But nonetheless, I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good experience overall. Um, I didn't get as far as I'd hoped. It was kind of hard for me to get into it a little bit, but I did enjoy it for what I from what I played of it. And you know, I it makes me a little sad that it didn't come out um, in North America at the time it did. I'm happy that it's on the eShop, and um, I'm definitely going to look for a repro of this game. 
similar to how Leo mentioned. Um, going. Well, I want to get the original copy. Oh, okay, yeah. Nick, you yeah, can I have get... my repro, bro, because oh, I, I bought that. I bought uh, the real one at Laughing Crow. Hey, so you could have my repro, dog. Appreciate it, dude. For Look, sure. Your face had there that you thumbs go. up. I don't know if y'all saw it. Yeah, I, I saw that too. <laughs> is is, is this a... what cues it? I don't know. I was telling you, we, we, we saw that earlier in the pre-show and I was tripping out. <laughs> that said, um, overall, I highly recommend the game if you guys haven't tried it. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it on to Sam. All right. Yeah. I yeah. I initially chose the game. I got, I'm got. i on 1606. I'm timing myself for so 19 minutes. I will say the first thing off the bat, I'm going to a little speed run it. Um, the story, I don't know what the heck was going on, man. I like there were times where I thought I was understanding until I didn't. Every other cutscene was like, Saki! And I'm like, what is going on, dude? The characters look different. They evolved into this other thing. And I don't know what the heck was going on. But I will say that the gameplay was crazy, dude. Like, in a great way. It was yes. hard. But I don't know if there's any other game that did what this game was doing before it. Like, yeah, it totally. kind of did, like, twin stick shooting without it doing t- twin stick shooting in a way because you had to move um it, it felt different than a shmup and in certain scenarios i will say that it tried to do um a little bit too much not in a bad way um but in a fun way like there was some stages where it was like it wasn't platforming but they're like side scrolling um and like things rotating is like it was cr- like a lot of stuff was going on that i wouldn't didn't think were going to happen there were like um parallaxing stages there's yeah. a bunch of stuff going on um they worked with I, their limitations yeah I treasure think, they love experimenting with weird stuff like they never do sequels they just <laughs> they just go off the rails within their own games they're they're gonna edge you they're gonna make you they're one game that you really you. like and then they're going to be like, no, you're not going to see that again. Yeah, no, yeah. And like, they rarely ever have sequels. Sorry to interrupt, Sam. Like, the only one that I can no, think of is uh, Advanced Guardian Heroes off the top of my head, how that was a sequel to Guardian Heroes. And I guess Sin and Punishment Star Successor. So I just broke my own rule. But was that actually made by Treasure? I think it was. Okay. Could, yeah, we'll look later. I know. Nick, I pull up that video something. of the uh, Sin and Punishment Star Successor fact check. With the gorilla. Um, I think what was I gonna say? Um You were talking about parallax scrolling and how they yeah, were. Yeah, I did a lot of different things that I didn't like anticipate the game was gonna happen. It was fun. Um I, oh yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say this I, with the expansion pack. Leo, the game I think runs at a solid runs at a six, 60 frames per second on the original is hardware. Is it 60? I, I wanna yeah, say I it was 30. 30. Was crazy. Like That's I will impressive. say I will say it ran very smooth, but are we sure it was that, 60? Dude. Like, we, uh, I think it runs at 60 without resident the fact pad, checker, bro. We're gonna get a fact checker here, bro. I swear, I I looked up a little bit of it, and I swear I saw something that I runs at 60. I don't know if it talked about the if, Switch if Online is. version, but it ran at 60, and it I remember it talking about it didn't need the expansion pass. If That's it is, cool. and that is insane because the N64, honestly, that whole generation of consoles. That's where we saw the shift from 60 FPS to 30 and sub FPS, especially with 3D titles. Uh, well, a lot of the so, Nintendo game ran at 60 FPS. Like, can you imagine 64? how hard that game would oh, be? Smash actually like, did, yes. Smash can you imagine how hard that game would be with frame drops? Like, if that game uh, had frame drops, that would be uh, Nick, impossible. Uh, Nick's got yeah, it. it. It does run at 60 FPS. That 64, is dude, insane. Super Mario 64 runs at 60 frames per second. I don't believe Super Mario Smash 64, 64 did. runs at Smash 60 did. frames per second. Um, I I don't I'm not sure, but I think the Nintendo 64 like first party stuff like ran well. I don't know because uh, so, you also got stuff like the Zelda games, which like they didn't run terribly, but they were not optimized either. No, those those ran like at so, 12 frames at some point. The, if I remember correctly, the N64 was actually in terms of the processor at the time, it was the strongest in the generation, but it was very limited by the RAM and cartridge space. Yes, so that's like the discrepancy that you see. Yeah, like there are. De- I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure about Mario Kart, but I'm pretty sure it runs. Um, There's some games that run at at least 30, and honestly, I'll take a stable 30 over an unstable 60. Yeah. So it says Mario Kart is 30 FPS. 30. Okay. Yeah. But, but yeah. yeah, I think the game. 
I didn't know that the Nintendo 64 had games like that. I guess that's the best. If I had to describe the game in a sentence, that's what I would say. Yeah. And overall, I loved the game. I loved it. I beat it like in two sittings. And I know you, we all went on, went on Discord and we're playing it. And I was like, nah, bro, I already beat it. <laughs> yeah, we were playing it together at some point. Um, and okay, so me, I looked Leo it up. and Sam were all looking at like the last level. Or Sam already beat it, but Leo and I were basically hit the last level on the same night. And we we're just yeah. chatting through it. I didn't want to spoil it for you guys. The freaking Evangelion. Evangelion well, I, beat like it, I, said, I beat it in COVID. I beat it in COVID and oh, have no right, idea right. how I beat it in COVID. Like, because I beat it now with save states. And I beat it oh, then man. without save states. And if I'm not mistaken, Sam, I think you just muscled through it without save states as well, right? Yeah, I didn't use any saves. I mean, I used save states whenever I like finished playing for that day. But I didn't like, oh, dang, I died. Let me go back to. I definitely like, did that. Save I, state. I didn't save scum. I did use save states, um, uh, but I don't think I save scummed it. But it, I started off not save scumming, but at some point I was like, oh, this game's hard. They give like, you really a hard. bunch of freaking continues to the point where that. it wasn't all that freaking hard. And then every once in a while you hear, what was it? What did it say? Get um, bonus. Yeah, get bonus. <laughs> Saki. <laughs> but so then I think that's already all four of us. So then I think now we go into the segment where we all give right. it a letter rating and then we average it out and we place it on the board of the cartridge Game Boys Cartridge Club um freaking Pantheon, whatever we want to call it. Tier list, Pantheon, whatever, yeah, whatever we call it. Um I'd I guess I'll go first one. since we're already talking. I was thinking so or just to give a little background the first game that we played uh was kirby's dreamland 3 and that mm -hmm. all of us um gave it a c so we got a c so that's kind of like what our palate cleanser was um i thought about giving it an s at certain points but i think i am just going to give it a solid a i think it it's hard because there's so many games nowadays that are way better. So like whenever I played it, I'm like, this is annoying, right? But had I played it then, I don't know if I would have thought it was annoying. I would have been like, this is the GOAT. Um, but because of that, I think I'm just going to solidly give it out. An A is my choice. Um, now I'm going to move it on to Isaac. So similar to Sam, uh, this is one of my favorite 64 games. Um, and I really wanted to put it in S and I still kind of thought about putting it in an S, especially because, um, I wanted to kind of give it some buffer just in case someone put a B or lower <laughs> in terms of when we we're talking today, it's just, just to give it the solidified, the A, but in that case, that means I really want to put it in a, um, I'm talking in terms of cartridge club when I'm putting it in an A, if I'm talking 64 library, I'd probably have it in my favorites. But if we're talking about Cartridge Club where we could really play anything, I got to have it exposed to anything and everything that we could possibly play on this channel. So I'm going to have to put it in A because as much as I want to put it in S, there is very much the possibility that there are several games that I like more than Sin and Punishment. Sin and Punishment is one of my favorite N64 games. It's one of my top five N64 games. However, I need to put it in A because I do need to recognize that it has a bit of a timed amount of flaws given that it came out the year it came out it's on the controller it's on it has some mechanics that are really limited to what it was able to do on the console and the controller it had at the time um and that's not a knock against it if anything all of this stuff is just speaking how great it is for its time it feels like a game that would be on a better console with better controls in a later time but it just didn't reach that yet that being said, I need to go play the sequel now that that one's on Wii and that one's on a better console. So we'll see. I put it in A. I put it in A and I pass it on to Leo. I was actually about to put it in S. Then you brought up a very good point of we're not grading it as the N64 library. We're grading it in terms of our cartridge. I was like ready to put it in S. And then you said that. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so now that we are we have that in mind, I I think mm -hmm. that A's also, it's hard because I don't want to just have it every episode be like, C, 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 A, 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 A. But it's like, it's funny how this one worked out because I agree. Uh, hey, I was, still don't know what Nick's going to give it. Uh, and we had Cheetle who was, Cheetle would have put it in A. He probably would have put it in D tier. Like he was hate, or not <laughs> hating it, but he was frustrated. 
Uh, but yeah, I think I think A is a solid spot for this one. I would, uh, if I was to look at it as its own game, not just in the N64 library, like there is the small flaw of the whole story things. And this is an arcade game, so story is not the biggest deal. But it is something to keep in mind. And uh, with all that said, yeah, A. Now I'm going to pass it on to Cheeto. I'm not joking. Uh, Nick, go on ahead. Wait, Nick, did you even beat it? I did not beat it, no. So should you, should you even rate it? No, and vo- not joking. No, he, I think he should still get to. Okay. So I'm going to start off by saying that the on rail shooter genre is not usually my thing. Um, I did appreciate the game. And I, um, whenever I try to rank a game, I try to put myself back in the era in which it was created. Um, and with that said, I'm going to go ahead and give it an A as well. Yeah. Just because I think, I don't think I've played any. <laughs> oh, dude, what is your camera doing? <laughs> Wait, what's up? Uh... <laughs> I paid for Podcast Plus, yeah, boys. Got I got the premium on, podcast. You got fireworks over there, bro. <laughs> 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 it's a non-rail shooter going on in my background. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I I don't know if I've played a an on-rail shooter that is on par with this one. I think the on-rail shooter genre is a little bit, uh, you know, they don't make them as much anymore. But even so, I think it's still a really good time. And um, I'm excited to see where this one holds up, you know, in the next couple months with the other games we play. Um, definitely given it an A, though. So. You know, I heard that this game plays a lot like Kid Icarus Uprising. I was so, getting some Panzer Dragoon vibes off this. People in the chat, if you guys have played Sin and Punishment and want to look for another game... Um, that's the, the game that I've seen on Reddit and like a lot of people compare it to that. It plays very similar. Um, or if you hate it, if you hate Sin and Punishment, then avoid that game. But yeah, let us know in the chat, guys, if you played Sin and Punishment. If you did, did you like it? Um, if you did not, um, are you going to try it out? And have you ever, have you ever even heard of this game? I don't know, man. Um, so are we settling for A tier on this one, or do we take Cheeto's hypothetical consideration into mind? Hey, hey if we're taking Cheeto's hypothetical, I'm changing mine to S to buffer it, bro. <laughs> so hey, then Chito either way, we here. end up in A then. <laughs> yeah, also, so we, I don't much... think we ever mentioned Cheeto's not here. <laughs> did we yeah, ever he had some personal stuff going on, so. Yeah. No, so we I didn't th- mention it. I think we should not take his grade into consideration. I like what I said, even if he did, he would have bumped it up anyways. So I think we, we end up in like the A, A minus tier anyways. I think going forward, if the person is somebody's not here, we could ask them their opinion. But I think for today, we just go with the consensus of us four. Freaking Isaac's <laughs> trolling with the fireworks, bro. <laughs> Isaac trolling. He would never. <laughs> oh, you see, look, now it's switched. Um, Dude. What can I, I say? Think I'm patriotic I, today. <laughs> I think it's a good incentive to be like, if you want your 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 grade to be taken into account, you got to show up for the pod. That makes sense. Um, and then also, yeah, because then if it's like, if I hated a game so much and it's an F, and I'm like, bro, I'm not going to miss. I'm going to make sure everybody knows <laughs> That's this fair. game sucked. I'm going to give it an F. Um, okay. And I'm, All right. So it's solidified. We are on A tier for Sin and Punishment and C tier for Kirby uh, Night- or Dreamland 3. I forgot what it was called. Kirby's Nightmare on Elm Street. Woo. All right. All right. And before we move on to the next segment, I'm the next person that gets to pick a game for the Cartridge Club. And for my choice, I also want to go with one that's on the Switch online service on the expansion pack. And I'm going with Shinobi 3 on the Sega Genesis. Oh, hell. Okay, now, hold on. This is on the S- Switch online service, but I will say, if you have access to it, and I'm pretty sure Sam does, the way that I would recommend playing it is actually on the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, this is one of those games where it's 2D pixel art, but it does support the 3D mode. And normally I'm not a big fan of 3D, but when it comes to 2D pixel art, it is transformative. Like, it actually, like, enhances a lot of your immersion for that game like because you're only seeing the foreground and focus in the background it's still all pixel oh, art, but it just looks amazing yeah the parallax scrolling is gonna look amazing if you got that 3ds shinobi so yeah three, bro you shinobi know, three i was actually if you guys want to yeah. play along hey that, that was hers. the one actually i was gonna pick when it was my turn leo so <laughs> wow uh, really? yeah 
Yeah. He's got a I free between, one now. I was between I was stuck between two. I wanted to pick a Genesis game and that was the like probably when I was gonna go with. But I'm I'm excited to play with it. Hey, what happened? I thought you told us a little behind the curtain. I thought you told us you were gonna pick Sonic R. Oh bro, uh, Leo, <laughs> now he's gonna pick Sonic R and he's gonna make us all <laughs> suffer, bro. <laughs> Now, there's no way we could all play Sonic R. I, it would require. Uh, I'm gonna tell you like this, Nick. If we're not gonna play Sonic R, I gotta tell you now, bro. That game is cheeks, bro. You Sonic Sonic feels like he's yeah. running on ice you skates. Guys, nah, and... you, gotta, you guys are thinking about it wrong. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta imagine that they're cars. When they imagine... made Mario Kart, bro. No, bro. They, they, they be sliding made all Kart. over the place. They're like yeah. sliding they're, all over the place. It's objectively a bad game. I'll give it yeah. that. But if you know how to play it, it's okay. It's... It plays good. It plays good on the GameCube because the controller. I, I'm super nostalgic for it. That's probably why. <laughs> Run on some rollerblades on a banana peel. That's Sonic R, bro. Pretty much, yeah. I'll All right. Are we ready for the next segment? Yeah. I will say, if you guys are watching on YouTube and this is the video you guys are watching, remember to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button and let us know why we suck in the chat and why this game is the greatest of all time and why your opinions are wrong and why Sam and is the GOAT and... That is all. Okay, bye. I love you. Okay, so yes, that is part of Cartridge because I just love that song. And then with that, we're going to go straight into our next segment, which I also chose this time around, and it is Buy, Rent, or Sell. Like Leo mentioned previously, let me actually wait after this play. Welcome to Buy, Rent, or Sell, where we put classic gaming controllers head to head and rank them according to our favorites. This month, it's a battle of the controllers, Nintendo GameCube, Xbox 360, and the PlayStation 2. Which one is a must buy? Which one is worth a rent? And which one would we sell off? Each of us will share our rankings, but trust us, you'll want to stick around until the end to see where we all land. Some of these might surprise you. And with this month's uh, Buy, Rent, or Sell, we are going to do the Nintendo GameCube controller. We're focusing on controllers. Nintendo GameCube controller, the PlayStation 2 controller, and the Xbox 360 controller. I know they're kind of not all from the same generation, but I kind of You gotta give Xbox a fair shot, bro. If you put the Duke, it's gonna lie. The Duke's the best, bro. No one's gonna pick the Duke. More like the Dukey. (laughs) (laughs) I like Dukey by Green Day. I'll take it back. Well, Dookie by Green Day shot. is a great album. Do you have the time to listen to me, one? Um, so with that, we, I, I, you know what? I'll just get started since I passed it on the first time. And uh, I will say, do I even have, typically have my GameCube here? Um, I don't have it. I moved it from my tripod. But Sam, being a GameCube fan, I do not believe that. This is a cheat code for me, dude. But because of that, I'm going to first start with... Um, my, <laughs> my God, the, I see. <laughs> with the rent one, um, audio listeners, if you guys can't see, Isaac's got some weird camera setup where if he does a thumbs up, it's just fireworks in his background. So he's just, I just got actual fireworks in my room, guys. I, I got a pyro technician to set up in the background of my yeah. setup. So we got, a, you got a that budget. law school money now. So of course we got a high budget here in the game boys. Um, but with, I'll first first get started with my rent, um, choice. And I think honestly, I, a lot of people hate me for this. A lot of people hate me either way, no matter what, but I am going to pick the Xbox 360 as a rent. It's, it's, it's hard. Dude, every, I, I, no one I've ever talked to said they said that the Xbox 360 controller sucks. Dude, it's kind of like, there's a, I mean, I guess with the DualShock PlayStation 2, there's a reason why the controller... Oh, Leo, Leo. <laughs> uh, the Xbox 360, I think, is up there as like one of the best best to do it the first time, dude. Um, but I, the only reason why is just because the GameCube controller for me is such... So nostalgic and it's so weird and it works so well in a way that it's very... From a user uh, experience perspective, the A button is so huge and they map all of the primary actions to the A. The B button's smaller. The X and Y buttons are like really weird whenever you first look at it, but it works so perfectly. Um, the one gripe I would have about the GameCube controller is if I could go back in time and let Nintendo know to add something is to add like a separate, like a Z L button or something. They have that now on the Switch, but they they only had a Z button on the right side, which 
going back to it and playing other games, it feels kind of weird with when you compare it to a modern controller. Um, but with that, that's going to be my buy um, uh, choice. And then that leads that I think people are going to hate me more for this, actually, for my freaking PlayStation 2. I'm going to have to sell it because I never grew up with PlayStation. I never had a PlayStation console growing up. So the two joysticks is being in the same place ain't it for me cheap. and that's all i will say dude i i a lot of people are gonna roast me for that they're like oh dude that's the, the superior you freaking are dumb sam i'm gonna freaking fart on you <laughs> <laughs> i can fart on you regardless and isaac just farted so but yeah i think those are my choices i am sam i'm going to bu- buy the nintendo gamecube controller i'm going to sell the uh playstation 2 controller and i'm going to rent the xbox 360 controllers my final choice is locking it in and with that um let me know in the comments if you guys agree with me or if you guys think i'm dumb uh with that i'm going to pass it on to nicholas so this one was really hard for me to be honest because i have a, a fond mem- i have fond memories of all these consoles I've owned a 360, I've owned a PS2, and I've owned a GameCube. Um, so putting these, picking these in order and getting rid of one of them was very, very difficult for me. Um, that said, I'm going to start with my rent as well, similar to Sam. Um, I love the GameCube controller. I am going to rent it, though, Ooh. and I'll tell you guys why. <laughs> um, I, have this connect- I was not I ha- expecting that. I have this connected to my computer right now. I'm all, I'm like... My computer is pretty much a slippy machine. Like that's pretty much what I use it for whenever I have time. Um, the reason being, honestly, I love it. I think it's the most comfortable controller to me personally. Like, period. And whenever it works, it works so well. Like with Melee, you can't. You, to me, you can't play Smash without a Smash controller, uh, a GameCube controller. I see. I call it a Smash controller. It's not even a GameCube controller. It's a Smash controller. Playing, playing. You know, um, Mario Kart Double Dash and. Um, Super Monkey Ball with this controller with the analog is just like perfect. But honestly, the thing I dislike about the controller the most is the C stick. Like for Smash, and I was thinking about this, like how I, how would I uh, how I would articulate this. Like for quick movements, the C stick is great when you're doing aerials and Smash. But when you're using it for like as a camera control, um, like in Metroid or like like any Zelda or something like that, I hate how small it is. It's like to me. Other, the other controllers do it better for using dual stick movement. Um, for like FPSs, like this to me is just not a good controller for FPSs or things of that matter. But when it works, to me, it's the my my favorite controller. But because of that, I because it's not as versatile as some of the other two as the other two in my opinion. I had to put it as my rent, um, even though I think definitely it's the most con- comfortable for me personally. And then um, for my buy, I'm honestly going to go to 360. Um, not to say that the PS2 controller isn't amazing. There's a reason why the form factor remains the same, even to like the PS5. I know the PS5 is a little bit more bulky. <laughs> and I, oh man, I'm going to get beat up after this one. <laughs> um, you know, okay. I'm just going to straight out say it. Like, it's a good controller. Like, I played a ton of games with the PS2. I just think that the, like, if I'm comparing it to the Xbox 360, I don't like how the analogs are uh, parallel to each other. Like That's what I'm saying, I prefer, bro. I prefer them being separated. Um, and I think because that, I think the Xbox 360 works better for me. And I just think the Xbox 360, honestly, I think it's the best controller ever made. Like it's just, Ooh. it's damn good. They got it right. And like going from the Duke, which is this just big, huge, humongous thing to the 360, it's just like, they just, night and day such a difference i think you know i even i even have a 360 controller to this day whenever i play computer games like the you know i usually use my 360 controller um just because you know it's i just like the form factor i like how it's not too bulky but it's not too thin and um it's just a really good controller um and with that said i don't think the ps2 controller is by means a bad controller at all i you know i played a ton of games on the PS2, like San Andreas, I probably put so many hours into that game, and all the Grand Theft Autos, and you know, all the great games that were on the PS2. So it's no by by no means a bad controller at all. So um, it was difficult for me, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to sell the PS2, unfortunately. And with that, and I'm gonna, I'm, with that, I'm gonna send it over to Isaac. 
Okay, all you ex bros out there, you get ready to get mad. Go get your batteries. Go to the dollar store. Go to Walmart. Whoa. Go buy some Duracells right now. Charge up your, take them I out of your remote right. control gone. from your TV right now because all you did was copy the PS2 controller and move the move one little stick upwards. I could do this, bro. It's not that hard. I know you guys don't want them down there next to each other, but let me put it like this. I get where you're coming from. Xbox has a very comfy controller, but you know what Xbox didn't have? Xbox didn't have games, bro. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> am I gonna? Am I gonna go play Halo Two right now? Hell no! You know all the games I got, you know, are now single player classics. You know, I got some. I could go play Shadow of the Colossus. I could go classic. play Ultimate Spider Man. You know, classic. Final Fantasy X. If I'm gonna classic. go play Halo, what am I gonna do? Play by myself? You know, am I going to go play Gears of War by myself? That Those those games are over, bro. Like, you got to put those games away already. The Xbox 360 controller is done, bro. And and, and uh, you, you could have yourself a good little game session. The best part about Xbox that, that was their selling point was that they were having, like, the best online games and the best multiplayer. Imagine you're deep in a grind session. You're online. You're cooking. You got, like, five kills, maybe ten kills. All of a sudden, battery dead. What are you going to do? You're not at Walmart. You're at your house, bro. You know what I mean? That's it. That's a wrap. You go to 7-Eleven, but I would say this, and I just, and I'm trying to make people mad, but the Xbox 360 is a very comfy controller, but I cannot justify that the base form is battery powered. I think that's the biggest reason why I got to put it in cell, bro. Otherwise, I would say if I were to put the Xbox 360 controller, this is a compliment. If I were to put it on any other console, I mean, let's look. Let's be real. If you look at the Switch Pro controller, that's the 360 controller. They 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 made a 360 controller. It's a comfy controller. I just I gotta put it into cell because of the battery thing. Um, rent. I'm gonna put GameCube also for similar complaints that Nick and Sam had already at this point. Um, just in terms of like. I don't like how the C stick is small, but I also don't like how the D pad is small because mm. the the D pad also takes away from one really cool thing that the GameCube was able to do with the Game Boy Advance player. And if you're going to go ahead and play some Game Boy Advance games, you're usually going to try and use the D pad versus the stick. And it's very, very tiny, man. It looks mm. like a something you get out of Lucky Charms, bro. Like it's that small. And then I'm I I can I can give them a pass on terms of the layout with ABXY. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just there. But it's literally one big A button and then everything else is small surrounding it. I get it. I get it. It's it's comfort. And the way you rest your thumbs, it's right where the A is going to be at all times, which is pretty cool. But I don't love it enough or hate it enough to be like, this should be changed. I think they should leave it like that. But if I were to change anything about the GameCube controllers, and like Sam said, they've changed it and updated it and, you know, later renditions on the switch and giving it the ZL, ZR. Um, I think that the D pad needs to be bigger and the C stick needs to be bigger. I do think I, I get what you guys are saying about the C sticks on the PS2. I'm going to buy the PS2 controller. Um, it's just Sony made it once and realized this is the, this is the form. This is our, uh, this is our bread and butter, bro. You're going to go ahead and have them two down there. Nice D pad X square. Triangle Circle, L2, R2, L1, R1. And it's just been that same form factor this whole time. I can pick up any PlayStation game from any generation and already be comfortable with the controls because of that. It's just had this consistency throughout. Um, Not to say that Nintendo doesn't because Nintendo is very brave. They always change their gimmick, which is pretty cool. Um, But I would like to say this too because i know i was coming in hard on xbox xbox probably would have been my rent if it weren't for the battery thing not gonna lie yeah but with that i'm gonna pass it on to leo because i know leo's ready to cook let him cook all right so when it comes to the xbox controller great triggers great shoulder buttons great face buttons great analog sticks you know what i'm not praising what goddamn d-pad Oof. One of the worst D-pads in existence. That alone, sell tier. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to mince words. That is what puts it in sell for me. I like myself a good D-pad. That is, like, I know that you guys are saying, like, it's one of the best controllers ever. And it is. And 
that is the Achilles heel of the Xbox, alongside the battery thing that Isaac mentioned, which is something I forgot about until he mentioned it. That D-pad is just awful. Now, that said, the next two are not so clear cut for me as far as the uh, buy or the rent, because they both have ups and downs and they both have things that have been iterated upon since then. Uh, so these rankings could honestly change for me. But if I was to put it something into the rent category, I think I'm going to go with the PS2 controller. Not that it does anything inherently wrong. In fact, as Isaac said, when the PlayStation 1 created the framework with the initial just D-pad controller, I forgot what that one's called, and then they went to the... Uh, it wasn't quite the DualShock yet. There was one in between. Uh, then they went into the DualShock. The DualShock was the standard bearer for controllers going forward. Little things here or there modified uh, how it would go forward. And the PlayStation 1 got it right. The PlayStation 2 got it even more right. The PlayStation 3 got even more things right, but then changed little things here or there, like the weight distribution that weren't, didn't feel as comfortable. The PlayStation 4 got it super right. And th like, it's just... With that controller, it's not that it does anything wrong. It's just that things have gotten even better since then. And that's why I'm placing it in the uh, rent category. Uh, but like I said, on a different day, I could have gone by with this one. Uh, and with that said... Uh, something that you guys brought up a lot was analog stick placement. Personally, I'm very give and take on analog stick placement. Uh, when I hold a controller, I generally take it for what it is. And it, I kind of remind myself that it follows the conventions of whatever uh, platform it's on. So if it's a Sony console, I know that the dual analogs are going to be right next to each other. If it's Xbox or uh, Nintendo, they're going to be offset. If it's Sega, I wish they were still around. So... <laughs> Um, uh, that thing has never really bothered me as much as a lot of other people, but what puts the GameCube controller in the buy category for me, it is just the most comfortable controller that I've probably ever held. Maybe not necessarily when it comes, again, when it comes to feature set, because as you guys mentioned, it does need, uh, the other, uh, shoulder button, like a LZ instead of just having the RZ right there. But the triggers on the GameCube are some of the best I've ever felt. Like, they're analog, but then it's got that digital click right at the very end. So the fact that it's got both functionalities there is amazing. With the face buttons, uh, while it's not the most uh, beautiful looking thing out there, functionally speaking, it makes sense. You don't have to look at the controller and you know where B, A, X, Y are. Uh, analog stick. Also excellent. Maybe the octagonal gate wasn't the best way to go about it, but we were still in the experimental era for analog sticks. The two uh, things that I do definitely agree on, though, when it comes to the flaws of the GameCube, because one thing that I want to mention is that all three of these controllers are flawed. Uh, one is the D-pad, and two is the C-stick. The C-stick, as Nick mentioned, circumstantially speaking, could be excellent, but at the same time, could also be a hindrance. The D-pad is functional and it's ironic that we mentioned that it doesn't work out well for Game Boy Advance controls because it's the same exact size as a Game Boy Advance D-pad. It's just that uh, within the framework of it being on a full-size controller, it's like, whoa, 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 don't let little bro cook again. Yeah, um, Nintendo cheaping <laughs> out here, bro. It, it's yeah, crazy. like, it's crazy I, I think I get had... why they did it, though. It's crazy Sorry, how they had that such a great D-pad on the Super Nintendo controller. And then they're like, yeah. nah, fam, let's just use the G Game Boy Advance one. Leo, agree with me here. Every D-pad needs to be the Saturn controller. Yes. Yes. Saturn is the gold standard for D-pads. Uh, right behind both of the Saturn, I have either the PS Vita D-pad or the uh, oh, Neo Geo D-pad. Yes. The Sugma train is rolling. I've so, never played any of those consoles or touched the controllers. So uh, the, the Neo Geo one is great because it's micro-click. And the PS Vita one is kind of what I consider an in-between of the, in the micro-switch D-pad of the Neo Geo and the Saturn's uh, just excellent D-pad design. So uh, Sam, grab your Vita real quick and just mess with the D-pad real quick. Tell me that does not feel great. Uh, anyways, uh, as far as the controls are concerned, yes, I'm going to go with buy the GameCube one, uh, rent the PS2 one. Those two could switch off on any given day and sell the Xbox One. And it's funny because 
none of us are in agreement with uh, this one right here. Uh, and that's something that I definitely noticed because both Isaac and I had uh, the Xbox and Cell tier. And uh, Sam and I both had the GameCube and Buy tier. But then in between that was a lot of difference. And yeah, those are just my feelings on those three controllers right there. How does Carmi control Isaac? How's his D-pad? Let me ask him real quick. What do you think? Audio he says video games that. are for nerds. Oh, yep. Kind of are, but... He's not wrong. That's I choose to be a nerd. I'm going to fight your dog whenever I see it. All right, so Sam, tell me how that PS yeah, Vita D-pad, D-pad feels. Honestly, it's really good. I love that PS Vita D-pad. Pretty good D-pad. Although these... Uh, Analog sticks kind of suck. Yeah, it's one of those things where uh, it's like the switch. Uh, co- yeah, exactly. Like they're like, okay, we have to have analog sticks on a portable, so they're gonna be flawed just by design. That's a uh, Gen two. Yes, it is. Vita. Yeah, this is Gen two Vita non OLED. I think all right. Models are great. Yeah, uh, honestly, anyway. as as great as the OLED one is, if you were to buy one, get the LCD one, just because the the start, select, and home buttons aren't recessed, so it just makes for a better experience overall when you're in the quick gameplay session. And the charger uses right. a micro USB instead of that weird That also makes it a lot easier. Instead of proprietary. Yeah. yeah. And with All that, right. we, you guys heard our voices and opinions on controllers. And let us know in the chat which controllers you would choose um, to buy, rent, or sell the Xbox 360, PS2, or Nintendo GameCube. And if, if you like this video, if you're watching on YouTube, destroy that subscribe button um or if you hate us then destroy that thumbs down button and if you want to tell me that i suck yeah go in the comments and be like sam is dumb because he whatever you want to say fill in the blank and if you're liking these types of topics please let us know in the comments what type of topics you'd like for us to cover and send suggestions for each of these like buy rent sell or a cartridge club we're always open ears. We're always trying to just kind of, well, what we really do is to hang out with each other and have conversations. But also, we want to know what you guys want to hear us talk about. Um, if there's a certain topic or a console or a thing you want us to discuss, whether we agree or debate, uh, it, it doesn't cost you anything to throw a comment down. Yeah, I agree. And with that, that is our segment of Buy, Rent, or Sell. I'm going to end cap it with the intro. going to go straight into our next segment, which I made a new intro for. And this is not the actual real name. I just kind of just put it on there for the sake of having something. But who knows? This might just be official. The Game Boy's Yap session where we (laughs) yap. (laughs) Ever get tricked by a friend who swore you could play as Luigi in Super Mario 64? Or maybe you spent countless hours trying to catch Mew in Pokemon by beating the game 1,000 times in a row. Well... You're not alone. We're unpacking all the crazy, hilarious, and downright impossible myths we heard and yes, even believed back in the day. Stick around because we're saving the most mind-blowing rumor for last. You won't believe what we fell for. Yeah, like we would read things on the internet, like Game Facts, Cheap Planet, all those places, like early internet, um, where we didn't know what was cap and what was real. So we would just kind of try everything. And uh, I don't know if you guys in the chat have experienced that a little bit of older folks might have. Um, and I know I fell for a bunch of those. I'm going to just go straight ahead and talk about how in Pokemon, uh, you guys mentioned where, uh, you find Mew underneath the truck. But I do remember reading like on cheap planet, all the crazy ones that were like, if you want to unlock Mew, like a shiny Mew in blue version, you would have to like beat the elite four, like, 73 times on December 27th and then you had to go and talk to Professor Oak like 27 times and then you had to like leave the room and then enter the room like 27 times and on the 28th time like me would just pop up and you had to battle it or something and I did so many of those and that I just made that off the top of my head but like there were a bunch of similar sounding ones that were just like super dumb that like I would just spend like a week beating the elite four like 27 times all for nothing i'm like bro 
we didn't have the internet, man. Like, or at least easily accessible, like in your pocket at twenty four seven, so you couldn't fact check yeah. your buddies on the playground. You know, what we're I mean? gonna age ourselves a bit, but that's the thing about growing up in the two thousands was the internet was around, but it was like, oh, if you had internet, you were a rich household back then. No, uh, well, a lot of the, these the only things... way you could get public internet was uh, through a library. I remember that's how I would get my internet. A lot of these things I learned from the internet like on cheap planet or like on game facts or people would just be capping on there. And then I'd be turning yeah. around and yeah. And I'd be turning around and be like, Hey, we had like our old, old friend, uh, Daniel, if you guys know, I'm not going to say last name, but I'm like, Hey Daniel, yeah. dude, yeah, I, know I freaking Daniel. read that you do this. Are you talking I don't about, remember. Uh, Daniel, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, he'd probably be, yeah, be like, uh, he'd probably be like, dude, that's dumb. <laughs> hey, shout out to he Daniel. Said. We can't say his but, last name just to be sure, but shout out to him. Me, dude. Yeah, I would probably tell him stuff. We'd be playing Pokemon in the bus and he'd be like, no, dude, you have to do this. A lot of them were kind of real. Like, no, you have to get this Pokemon. It's really strong. But a lot of them That's were what made it tricky. stuff. Because yeah. some of them were real and some of them were very obscure how things went about. Like, it made you believe the false ones because I I discovered shiny Pokemon by accident. I was playing my, my friend's copy of Ruby and I had a Game Shark and I thought it was a glitch. But I was like, hey, dude, I caught you this shiny Clamperl. And uh, another one was... I actually got um, in Gen 3 in Pokemon Emerald um, the Gen 2 starters after I completed the whole Gen 3 mm -hmm. decks. Yep. So I was like, well, then if that's true, then of course the rest of them got to be true. Nope. And you know, what else, yeah. you yep. know what else, too? You know what doesn't help is obtaining Mew, like if you guys remember in red, uh, yellow, and blue, to get Mew with the glitch is like a very uh, odd way do you get you have to like go to like yeah it's a very buggy glitch you have to basically run into a trainer open the menu and like fly or teleport and then you have to walk into a different area where then it'll force the menu to appear and depending on the last trainer you encountered you can make the menu whole disappear and depending on that number generated by the last pokemon you encountered by trainer battle it could potentially generate Mew, but it could actually potentially generate an infinite amount of different Pokemon. It was just so synonymous with being the Mew glitch because everyone used it to get Mew. And the thing yeah. with that is, like, with that being the case, it makes all the others seem plausible. And, like, in that game, you also had, like, missing you no know, and uh, just weird things. And I think, you know, with those things existing, it made room for people to think that um, some of these other things were or accurate. I, I have a couple that I can get to. Um, if, but if anybody wants to go first, um, I'm not sure if Lee was finished um, talking what he was saying. Sorry. I, uh, oh, yeah, I had to go take it. I was going to put something in the chat. I was going to take it because I'm pretty sure none of you have this one because I made it up. I tried to get someone with the playground rumor once when I was a kid, right? So if everyone here has played The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, we all know that it's a great game that literally, like the title mentions, it has a time theme. So there's going to be parts of the game where you play as a young Link, and there's going to be parts of the game where you play as an older Link, right? So because of that, I was trying to like trick my buddy because I was like trying to get some cool points off of him or something. I was like, hey, did you know that instead of just having to play through the game and get the Master Sword in order to become adult Link, if you just leave your game running for like a year, you could become adult Link. And then, and then I, hey, it didn't stop there. I, I doubled down, bro. I was like, leave your game running for a year and then do everything. Get the Master Sword and you'll become an old man who's like looking like a skeleton Link. You know, you, you just remind me of a different playground. One that is actually true, though. Uh, when you play Metal Gear Solid 3, there's this boss. I believe his name is The End. He's like this geriatric sniper character. And uh, there are two, like, apart from the actual boss fight itself, there are two different ways that you could kill him. I think that you could either kill him in the middle of a cutscene if you snipe him way earlier in the game than you're supposed to, or what you could also do is, in the game, during the boss fight, uh, you leave the PlayStation 2 on for a little while, and he dies of old age. It's an and that's thing. what I was trying to base, like, I didn't base it off specifically that. But we were literally, uh, for anyone listening now that maybe wasn't around, just to kind of like set the tone like the guys were talking about a little while ago. The internet did exist, yes. However, it was more of a privilege. Maybe you got it when you had computer time and the internet wasn't as revered and refined as they should say, as it is now. Now you have a dedicated website to just about everything. Whereas back then, everything was just made up. Every website that you went on, 
was people just kind of spewing whatever the hell they wanted to talk about. I, I remember, remember I wanted to create... Sorry, you gone. Oh, I was just going to say, like, Sam brought up Cheat Planet, right? How many of these Cheap people planet, listening right bro. now even know what Cheat Planet is, especially the, the people younger yeah. than us? You guys are remember? Cheat codes are not a thing anymore. They guys, died out, like, yeah. early into the PS3, 360 generation. Like, they kind of stopped really being a thing. I got fooled by Cheat, Cheat Planet so many times. You guys remember like, Cheat, the DLC. TV show, Cheat on G4? Cheat. Where it was G4. a TV show, bro. It was a TV show that you had to like wait until it was on like at 6 p.m. or whatever. And hey, back me up the, on this. The point of the show was just to give you cheat codes for video games, bro. You had to like, you had to pull out your notebook and be like, oh, dude, tomorrow we're talking about freaking GTA. So you had to like triangle, triangle. Give me some trash like, cheats yeah. too, bro. Dude, it's crazy. Right, guys, so, many, so many fun cheats. Back me up on this. I think the reason why cheat codes don't exist anymore is because DLC exists now. So it gets the same thing, but they could charge for it. Basically. I, I think that plays a lot into it. I think I think it's a lot of reasons, but I think that is probably the biggest one. Because now you, if people would be like, you know what? I'll be down to pay 99 cents so that I can get more. Mm-hmm. I can start with more health or whatever. I why do not? that, bro. I do that yeah. 100%, especially with RPGs. I know a lot of people may hate or love DLC, but I pay, dude. Like, I, I, I got a, a job, bro. I don't care if I'm paying like $10 and then boom, I get like 10 times the experience points I would get normally by playing the game. Like, that to me is like, I'm paying $10 to save like 20 hours. But yeah, I was one of those perpetuators of keeping a fake rumor alive. So was Nick, because I remember in the third grade, I talked to Nick. And he was talking to me about Blaziken and Pokemon. For those of you that don't know, Pokemon, Ruby and Sapphire, one of the starter Pokemon is Blaziken. And he's this Kung Fu learning chicken. And uh, it's a bird. It's a bird. It's a chicken. And Nick was telling me at first, he was like, I bet it could learn fly. Right? So then later on, we come to find out it doesn't learn fly. And then he finds out. He's like, he tells me one day at school, he's like, man, Blaziken's a chicken and it can't learn fly. What? <laughs> But I believed him too. And I was going with it because I didn't pick Torchic, which is the chicken. So I just kind of believed him. Oh, man, that'd be kind of cool. I kind of messed up picking somebody else. Like he picked the chicken that's a fighting the, chicken and it could time, fly. Do, do chickens fly, fly in real life? Yeah, exactly. No, I, don't know. I mean, I don't they kind of glide kind a little of bit. Do. They glide so a little bit, but I think they're too heavy compared to their uh, wingspan or something like that. So that's why they don't. But yeah, I got fooled by Cheat Planet before. That's actually where I kind of like. Saw my first Zelda rumor that was fake. It was very similar to what I told my buddy. It was something that had to do with faking, skipping to Adult Link earlier. But that was mine. I was one of the culprits of spreading a fake playground rumor. It's not cheat codes, but I heard you broke your computer doing some other gaming stuff. Yeah, yeah. So one time when I I was in the eighth grade and uh, I was going to get... an R4, the, right? The Nintendo Ninjas Get Us. I was going to oh. play my backups on... Uh, I was going to play my backups of <laughs> games fully, that I legally owned. Fully legal backups. Yeah. That you, so that games that I legally owned copies of. Um, I legally owned all the, the games on the hardware on DS. And uh, I was going to get an R4 cartridge, which will let you play backups on a Nintendo DS. You can still buy them and they're actually fantastic. But I was going to get one in the eighth grade, which would have been around like the 28, uh, 2008, 2010 era for middle school for the people on the podcast right now who are hosts. Um, and I was going to get one, but I ended up breaking my parents' computer because I thought, oh, nice. I found Banjo-Kazooie on the DS online, right? Thinking that, yeah, I'm going to be able to play Banjo-Kazooie and it just installed a bunch of malware to my parents' computer and broke it. <laughs> And and that was it. I got I got played by an internet rumor of like some Banjo Kazooie DS port, and it was it was far from that. It was just a big virus, and literally like flatlined my mom's computer, and she was super pissed. I didn't get an R four that year after that. It would have been a birthday present. Who knows, bro? Maybe Nintendo dumped the ROM, bro. And you're the one that fa- you're the only one that found it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I was the one who had access to the super secret ROM hack that that nobody else had of Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. I'm, but yeah, yes. I, I was propagating a, a terrible um, a terrible thing and uh, telling people that you could be adult Link by leaving their game on. I, I hope Buddy didn't do it because he probably burnt his cartridge. He probably burnt his 64. Burnt but with that, house. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah. You know what I'm crazy thing about Leo. that? The crazy oh, thing ahead, about Sam. that, I wanted to inject once. Like, I... Yeah. That's how I unlocked Mewtwo. Like, my cousin is like, dude, mm. if you want to... In yeah. Melee, if you want to unlock Dang. Mewtwo, you leave it on. 
And then you wake up in the morning and then it's like new challenger Mewtwo. And like, that's how you unlocked it. Uh, so it's not very far fetched that these rumors were all, were just straight capping. But yeah, sorry. And that probably perpetuated my idea that like, I half believed myself when I said that. Yeah. But it is what it is. I'm going to pass it to Leo. Leo, who was capping in your playground? Okay. So the thing about my playground rumors is that most of them were based on Pokemon. So we've already covered that. I'll, I'll go into a very minor instance of a, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it a playground rumor because it was mostly between my friends and my, a uh, couple of my family uh, members. Uh, but I mean, we we're still kind of experimenting with it. And okay. So for background, it, when I was growing up in, th- in the 2000s, I didn't come with a, from a very uh, affluent family by any means. I, I was, yeah, it's, I was lower class. So uh, a lot of the systems that we played were very old. Like uh, in the 2000s, I was still playing Sega Genesis. And, uh, I had discovered Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And, you know, Sonic and Knuckles has the lock-on technology. So pretty much what it came down to with mine was my friends and I would kind of swap game cartridges like, okay, what if we could make it uh, um, Superman and Knuckles? What if we tried out this game, Streets of Rage? And like, we were just, we didn't realize that it was only for Sonic. So we were like, okay, we got to try every single game that we can. And it's not necessarily a rumor sort of thing, but we're before the internet, we were just trying to figure out like, which games work with that and lo and behold yeah it's just sonic 2 and sonic 3 even sonic 1 didn't work if i remember correctly so that's That's the extent of mine just a very short little ramble i remember leo telling me this exact thing that he thought when he was a kid at one point he was like he was like bro we thought we were gonna put him in mortal kombat yeah (laughs) we were like what if we put mortal kombat in mortal kombat yep that's i believe it like especially if we're talking about giga chat boom knuckles that Get over insane. here. Hey, speaking hey, of Mortal Kombat, speaking of Mortal Kombat, we met freaking Raiden. I don't know. Nick wasn't there, but. Oh, Theo Raiden? Yes, man. We you met Theo Raiden, Raiden bro. Met Homie's Raiden. a Mexican, yep. bro. Oh, Raiden and Liu Kang, bro. Yeah, we called him Theo. He was hype when we called him that. Were, were they guests or they were were they just attending? They were guests. They were, uh, guests. They were yeah. guests on the... a social. So there yeah. was a social we attended after the convention. Oh, and awesome. they also were in the background. And yeah, they were really cool. Cool guy. Shout out to him. Um, but Nick, did you already mention your... Uh, your? Um, not quite. Uh, so I, I got two. Um, one is going to be brief um, because I didn't, I didn't know about it as much as a kid, but I just wanted to throw it in there because it's popular on the internet is uh, playing as Luigi and unlocking Luigi Mario 64. I know oh, that okay. one was like one of the most popular. L is real, boys. Yeah. L is real. <laughs> yeah, and I know, I know. Part of the reason why that um, that took off so much was because originally I think they were planning to do co op in that game, and there were like screenshots released, I believe, or something. Eventually, um, I think recently or within the last couple of years, the team that worked on it, some people have said it was actually not real. But, you know, that's one that spread on the internet for a long time, the L is real um, whole thing. But one of the ones that I actually believed is... Anyone that is, believed that took the L, that L is real. <laughs> yeah. I want to I wanna give some background to that. So for anyone who's played Mario 64, um, the 3D platformer, uh, you go into the back of the castle and there's just this statue of a star with some text in front of it. And um, you read it and it says something completely different. But if you look at it using the 3D camera, like, you know, going into first person mode, um, a lot of people on the Internet thought that the characters that were the text on that box were to spell out L is real. And given this whole theme of this topic is early days of Internet theories of video games. Everyone thought L is real. L, that must mean Luigi. Real, that must mean Luigi is real and he is in the game. Homies are capping, dude. And I remember people like people would say you got to collect so many certain coins or so many certain stars to unlock them, and just like, yeah, you know, it would have been awesome if he was playable, but yeah, unfortunately, no. Collect I seven hundred Some stars. people said you got to run around the star like, yeah. a bunch of times. Collect and then what was crazy stars. too is like, did that that eventually kind of became real, right, with the DS port? You can play yeah, as that, all I, of think, them. I think they addressed that feedback and they were like, all right, let's let's do this. And then since then, I think we've gone fan remakes where uh, mm-hmm. uh, like a uh, ROM hacks 
where they have uh, re-added those up. characters. Yeah, but yeah. like they added them into the 64 version, not the DS version. Um, what the other one I actually believed as a kid um, was related to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was the mm. Bigfoot rumor. Um, the reason there was a couple reasons. One, I had a strategy guide of San Andreas, and I'm pretty sure it mentioned Bigfoot in there. And then I would watch YouTube videos at the time that like created this like fake lore about it. And I'll show you guys, I'll show you guys why. So the reason why that like was believable to me, it was, it was in retrospect, it's like, obviously, you know, didn't have carry much weight, but, um, one of the reasons is because in the game on the map, there's this place called Baco beyond. And if you look, it's shaped like a foot and there's like little like toes right here. And in the video, they were like pointing this out. Like if you go to this place and this is like in the countryside of, um, Andreas, that you would see Bigfoot or you can like interact with him. It's actually funny because in GTA 5, they actually had a mission that was based on this lore where um, you have to like find Bigfoot. I just thought that was funny that they took that rumor. Um, something that was interesting is at the time, and um, there, you know, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas had a ton of cheats. And um, one of the cheats, if for those of you who might have played, there was this one cheat called Super Punch. And it Turn, it turned, I remember that one. It turned anybody who punches in the game into like anybody who punches would then do a one hit kill. So if you CJ punched anybody, one hit kill. But then also made the the like civilians do one hit kills also. And I was as a kid, I was like driving in the country, and I was in this area, and all of a sudden I didn't see it in my camera, but from behind something punched me, like, and I instantly died. And I instantly died. I was like, dude, Bigfoot just killed me. Like, <laughs> and I kept, I, I believed that for like a couple weeks until I eventually realized uh, it's, not, it's just rumors. But yeah, it, it was, it was, I would spend a couple hours trying to find him just because it's, it was fun. And by that point, there was nothing else to do in the game. So, homies are capping. I remember me and our also, friend. There was also one that I found way later. It was that you could unlock Sonic and Tails and Melee. And people would say that you'd have to, You'd have to get so many kills in cruel melee in order to. In order Hold on, we talk about capping and melee. I got a cap too about Nick. Here, here. when here. when I was a kid, next to the Blaziken thing, mm -hmm. you guys probably already know about how in melee there is a Giga Bowser secret boss, mm -hmm. right? Huh. So Giga Bowser is he's the Giga Chad Bowser. He's just this giant Bowser with horns, and he looks a lot more feral, a lot more dragon like, right? He's just a big Titan version, almost like a Kaiju, right? And you had to do all these missions in order to fight him in Melee. I remember being a kid on the playground, Sir Nintendo Nerd Nick here telling me, I bet I unlock him if I beat him. And I believed him. And then and he was giving me all the scoop, bro. He's like, I'm trying to unlock Giga Bowser, bro. <laughs> and, and he he you went could play. all the way through. You could play as him. There's like some uh, glitches you can do, but I think you could play as Giga Bowser. You could also but, play hey, as Nick Master wasn't Man lying. Too. I didn't. I don't know how to do the glitch, but I know you could play as Master Hand as well. Um, you need two controllers, but yeah. Versus mode, bro. We want to catch these hands. I'll be Master Hand. Giga Bowser's supposed to be like super broken too. Like yeah, super I'm not broken. Into that, but yeah. Hey, can we talk Anything? about that event for a second? I don't know if you guys are familiar uh, with uh, Melee. There's like event mode, and that's how you fight Giga Bowser. It's the very like the last of it. Bro, that last event, you had to fight Giga Bowser, Mewtwo, and Ganondorf. And Ganondorf. <laughs> a three versus one, bro. It's like, why? One? It's, yeah, it's hard wild. as it is to be freaking yeah. Giga Bowser, and you had to fight all three of them, like 3v1. It was broken, bro. Anyway. Was it health-based, or like you had to throw them off? Talk based All three. Uh, they, I think they have each have three stocks, and you have three stocks. So yeah, it's wild. three stocks versus three stocks. What's the cheating, strat? Bro. Like, who, who's the cheesiest player to Jiggly be Puff. in terms of beat it? Uh, Jigglypuff, you just you just rest Giga Bowser because his hitbox is so big, and then you just like try to edge guard Ganondorf, and then you gotta edge him. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, but guys. with that, yeah, uh, chat. Let us know if you guys have, or do any of you guys have any more? Uh, play. I mean, the old, the last one, right? I think the biggest one I I could think of. Sorry, is um, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire is Deoxys is mm. so there's a space station in the game like there's so if, if anyone doesn't know in Pokemon Ruby Sapphire and Emerald there's a space station right and every time you go and talk to the people at the space station they always bring up what flight they are in terms of uh space shuttles 
right? And the whole thing with Gen 3, there was a movie about Deoxys, who is this alien creature. And there's even Jirachi, who came from a meteor, right? And there's a meteor outside the space station. And there was all these little bits of lore alluding to space or some sort of space creature within the game. I remember hearing all the time when I was a kid, hey, you just got to get the space station to have a bunch of successful test flights. 127. I remember that number. Yes. Yes. And then what would they do, Leo? Absolutely nothing. Or are you talking about in rumor? In rumor, but both. Oh, yeah, in, absolutely nothing. But yeah, what was in the rumor? It was like a uh, like if you talk to the rock or something like that. Like it will tell you, it will give you uh, an item, and then you present it to the people at the space station, and they'll take you to space to fight Deoxys. Yes, yes. But what was really cool is if you play Alpha and Omega, Ruby that. and Sapphire, they reference it because That's eventually, awesome. when you beat the game, you go to the space station, you ride Rayquaza to space, and you fight Deoxys. Yep. That's awesome. This is but, this is one I believed as a kid too. Um, I believe I most Pokemon ones, honestly. I, I don't know if I remember all those details, but I remember like to obtain Deoxys legitimately at the time you had to get him through a mystery gift, but I didn't understand what that meant. I didn't understand yeah. that there were actually events back then. So as a kid, I was like, what's, I don't, I, I didn't understand it. So I would go to that island and try to, you know, do the flights and everything. And yeah, those I events just, are part of the reason why I bought an e-reader because some of them mm. are locked behind e-reader cards. And I bought an e-reader because people were getting really good at printing out event cards that are like to the same scale with the same barcode. And I always thought it'd be cool if I just had event Pokemon that were locked out by time just by printing out the codes. And some people are even getting good enough to make custom Pokemon with custom codes. And yeah, that was why I bought an e-reader. I bought it over at Laugh and Grow. Oh, we're on the topic of Pokemon, I got to ask you guys something. This is from our childhood, and I want to get your guys' opinion. I traded uh, a Pokemon to, obviously, I'm not going to say the last name, to um, one of our childhood friends, Lorenzo. And oh. so, so I, traded, I traded a legendary for a non-legendary Pokemon. I traded, uh, I, is it Raikou or Raikou? Raikou. Uh, Raikou. I traded Raikou for a Chansey. Ooh. Is that a bad trade? And the reason why I ask is because Chansey is a pain in the ass to catch. Yeah. It's I difficult. think it's kind of an even trade if you think about it that way then because you're guaranteed a Raikou in any playthrough. I think it's 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 a yes and no. It's It, it depends on what you value. Yeah, I agree with Sam because uh, for listeners who don't know, Raikou is a Pokemon that you can only, like Leo said, once per game. Uh, specifically in Fire Red and Leaf Green, it was depending on what Pokemon you pick. So if you picked Squirtle, you were going to get Raikou. If you picked Charmander, you were going to get Suicune in the wild. And if you picked Bulbasaur, you were going to get Entei in the wild. So he found a Raikou in the wild and traded it for Chansey. Now, Chansey, technically, there is an infinite amount of Chanseys in the game. However, it is a very, very, very hard Pokemon to catch. It only appears in the Safari Zone route where there are Pokemon that will only specifically appear there and you have to pay to get in there. And when you fight them, you don't get to do the things that would let you heighten your chances of catching a Pokemon, like weakening them or afflicting them with status or using a better Pokeball. You have to use the Safari Balls and your chances of catching Chansey are very low, which is why it's called Chansey because you only get it at a chance. So I can kind of get Nick. And and Nick, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say Blissey, who Chansey evolves into, is like, one of your favorite Pokemon. Yeah, I, I, um, I, Blissey was one of my favorite Pokemon. I, I'm talking specifically, um, you know, Gen 3, Fire Red, and uh, Ruby, Emerald, that generation. And I had, I trained, I had uh, Blissey level 100 on my team. Um, it did take me a long time to get Chansey because, as Isaac mentioned, it's the Safari Zone. You, you can't, it's not a normal battle type. You know, you have to throw rocks and do other things to try to catch the Pokemon. Um, something th- that, um, about catching the, the three legendary dogs, though, is I got lucky when I caught the dogs, but I know that if they run, they consistently run. You have to like go find them again. And I've heard people mm-hmm. say that that's pretty challenging as well. So it, it's not, it, it's still, I still think it's easier than catching Chansey because it, it's a waiting game with Chansey, dude. It's such a, I don't want to rain on your parade right now, Nick, because uh-huh. I know it's years later, right? Yeah. So Suicune, Raikou, and Entei, those are the roamings, right? Yeah. Suicune will run and reappear. There's a glitch for Raikou and Entei. If they disappear, they're never coming back oh, on man. Fire Red and Leaf Green. I, so you got one shot. 
when you run into Raikou and Entei and Fire Red and Leaf Green, they're not respawning. They never respond? They never respawn. There's a glitch. I wasn't aware Raikou of that. Entei. Yeah. I believe they'll use Roar instead of running. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if they use Roar, there's something that happens with the code that means they're never coming back. Suicune that, will come back, but Raikou and Entei sense. won't. That makes sense because um, one playthrough when I picked um, Charmander, I ended up beating Suicune. I mean, have, I had to chase it a couple times, so that makes sense. Yeah. I used to save my Master Ball for those. Yeah, definitely. Because otherwise, like, getting the other legendary Pokemon, you know, you could just save and then... Just... Yeah, I have to grind it out, yeah. but for those, I would just use my Master Ball because I don't want to chase them down. It'd be so annoying. Yeah. But with that, I think that's all. Did you guys have any other ones? No, I think we're uh, good right there. We each covered one, and we all kind of delved into the Pokemon, which is kind of our overarching yeah. theme with the uh, playground rumor. So there's that. Pokemon, yeah. shout out. And then if you guys in the comments, in the chat, if you guys have any that you guys fell as fell for as a kid, uh, let us know. Um, and if you guys like this video, if you're watching on YouTube, remember to destroy and button mash that subscribe button. And... If you Happy Spooky it, Month. Just go watch the scary movie. Thumbs down button. And like Isaac said, go watch a scary movie. Go touch grass. Go tell your parents you love them if they're still around. And let us know in the comments um, whose grandma eyes needs are to be picked up from the grocery store. Let us know in the comments whose eyes are prettier out of all of us. <laughs> and with that, thank you guys for watching Thanks and for listening. Watching, and if any of you guys want to say anything else, this is your guys' time. Nah, bro, just leave a comment if you got a topic we want to talk about. That's not how we're doing, guys. Remember, Sam's starving. You got to feed him. Yeah, bro, we hungry. I'm trying to eat. I went to Costco and I couldn't get a freaking slice of pizza, bro. Still $2.50 at least? I don't know. Actually, I don't know how much they are, but either way. I hate (laughs) the glizzy. The glizzy is $1.50 with (laughs) a drink. With a drink. Anyway, with that, shout outs. Thank you all for listening and stick around for the next episode. Listen whenever, wherever you want to listen, wherever you can listen. Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, um, Apple Podcasts. um, Anywhere you listen to podcasts, anywhere you watch videos, look for us and we'll probably be there. Thank you guys all. I love you. Bye. Good one. Bye. Bye. Later.